Hey guys, welcome to the Boat Lean Podcast. I'm Mark Perry, the creator of Boat Lean, which helps men with demanding careers get lean, strong, and functionally fit with exceptional energy. And so today, I have Nereus Bagdonis with me. And so Nereus is a holistic movement, strength, and lifestyle coach. He integrates mobility, strength, and skill building using a variety of disciplines such as gymnastics, dance, yoga, martial arts, and the traditional strength training principles. Nereus has 20 years of coaching experience, a degree in kinesiology, numerous training and performance co coaching certifications, and he's been featured as an expert and fitness model in several different media publications for years. And so it's actually kind of funny how I first met Nereus. This is going back like eight, nine years ago. And so I, uh, I was in Murray Hill, living in Murray Hill at the time. I had a training practice there. And so I see this like woman on the corner of the street and I'm like, she's like super woman. She's like super attractive. I'm like, hmm, I'm going to talk to her. So I ended up going up and talking to her. And then fast forward a week later, I'm, I'm kind of getting out of this like health food um, joint that we used to, I used to go to and I'm, I'm coming out of it. And all of a sudden, I'm like walking forward. I see this 6'3 superhuman person walking, super, superhuman dude walking towards me. I'm like what is going on here? And he's like walking right up to me. He's, he's a big dude. And he comes up and he's like, Hey, are you Mark Perry? And I'm like, um, yeah. He's like, well, I, I heard you met my girlfriend last week. <laughs> I'm like, Oh yeah. <laughs> and so it's pretty funny how we met, but ever since then we actually, you know, connected and we've done several workouts together and Narius um, has reached a super high level of health and fitness, one I aspire to, and he's really been inspirational to me. So I'm extremely uh, excited uh, to, to chat with him today and, and share his wisdom with you. And so with that said, thank you so much, Narius, for, for joining today. <laughs> Absolutely, it's my pleasure. I just realized how, how funny the story is because <laughs> it's 10 minutes ago, the girl that you were talking about texted me uh, and she lives in Munich and I live in Berlin and she was asking me if I if I'm doing some online coaching because she's looking for a coach so how nice. random together. <laughs> Dude, and I said I, I have to go to to talk to to Mark I'll, I'll text you later so this is super fascinating but I'm so glad that we met because I think she mentioned you and and I looked you up and I just was really impressed with all the things that you were doing. So when I saw you on the street, I just walked up to you and, and I'm so glad that, that we met. Awesome. Awesome, man. So uh, let's, let's dive in and, you know, you, you've been at this for a long time, right? You've been at this for 20 years. And so why did you first decide to become a fitness professional? Hmm. <laughs> I was five years old mm -hmm. and I watched the Shaolin movie and it had the most intense effect on me. At that moment, at five years old, I knew that this is what I wanted to dedicate my life to. So I just knew that it was about developing and discovering my physical capabilities and my mental control and discipline. I just what those, I saw what those monks were able to do with their with their bodies with their concentration, and I was just that's it. I, I had a vision of me being an old man with a white beard living in the mountains, teaching martial arts, and so that's how it started for me. So as soon as I begged my parents, my parents were super young; they were 20 when I was born. I begged them to take me to martial arts schools, and in the beginning they couldn't afford it, but then a friend of a friend was a kung fu teacher and then I started taking Kung Fu and then uh, when we moved I took Pancration which is like Greek mixed martial art and I just did whatever martial arts I could do because we moved around a lot and uh, that's how it all started for me and then since then my modalities have changed uh, I've gotten I was a really skinny teenager and then I wanted to gain some muscle and started strength training and, and competed in bodybuilding at some point and um, and then I got back to a little bit more performance kind of training, a little bit more to body weight training, gymnastics type of training, 
I'm, I'm now more into into even dance and and see how that that relates to strength training as well. But mm-hmm. but that whole idea of me wanting to be the best, strongest, most nimble, most most flexible, the best version of myself, uh, it started when I was five. That's pretty cool, man. I. I... <laughs> I think it's also I've I've been interested in it for a long time and, and that's a really powerful story. And you just mentioned something and actually that was it kind of leads to my next question, which is how you've had a journey, right? Like you you kind of were a competitive um, martial artist in karate. You were literally the NPC bodybuilding. I don't know if people really appreciate what that <laughs> what that means. Like he was literally a bodybuilder on stage, like. You know, and the yeah, exactly, exactly. The whole, the whole nine yards. And so, and you shifted and you became, I mean, a super in-demand fitness model, right? I mean, you literally were on, a, uh, on the cover of a major magazine and, right. and you've continued to evolve. So I, I'm kind of curious, like, uh, can you talk a little bit about kind of how you've evolved and where you are now? Yeah. Um, I think in a way my evolution makes sense and i don't think it's as original as i thought it, it was <laughs> right. um, i think most people start with an intention of wanting to look good they want to be right. sexy right. they want to be attractive and so as a teenager that's that's what i wanted so so initially i had that martial arts passion and that's what i started with but then when I was a teenager, I moved to the States. I, I, I'm origi- originally from Lithuania. And uh, at 15, I moved to the States, and I didn't fit in at all. I was, I was like a little black sheep. And I didn't speak English. I uh, dressed differently, and I was super skinny. And uh, yeah, so I just wanted to look better. I wanted to, to look more muscular. And I thought maybe, maybe I would get some dates that way. And that's how it started. I started lifting weights, and it was a bit of a struggle for me in the beginning. But then, um, then in my early 20s, I started gaining a little bit more weight. And then after after I did uh, after I competed in bodybuilding, I realized it wasn't very healthy for me. It wasn't very healthy for uh, for me mentally and and just physically what I had to take take my body through. But it was a, it was a dream of mine since, since I was 16. Uh, I wanted to be like on a cover of a magazine, and I wanted to be on stage. And I really admired Arnold and, right. and the professional bodybuilders. And so and so I did it, and I'm so glad I did it. I learned so much about how to work with my body. And uh, and at that after I did the bodybuilding, I thought, well, I want something more. So then I started wanting to get more, sh- getting stronger. So I started lifting really heavy and doing powerlifting. And after a while, that was really harsh on the body, and and I was getting injured and feeling feeling stiff and and not so good. And so then I started exploring exploring other modalities. And and at that time, I was around 30 and 42, turning 42 next month. I, I, I my girlfriend was an acrobat, and so she started introducing me to handstands and and contortion and some really unique and pole dancing and just really like acrobatics really unique disciplines for me and so that's how it expanded my my awareness of all these other disciplines and then I just kept leaning more and more towards towards that and I still strength train obviously but but now I'm a little bit more into like some esoteric kind of training and and things that make me feel good and make me feel healthy and nimble and make my right. make my joints feel feel great so yeah right now I was going to say, I think I've, I've gone on a, a similar, similar journey in that you kind of start with that, like, hey, I want to look like a fitness model. I want to look like this. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, I want to feel really good and I want to be more mobile. And I think that's, you know, one reason why, you know, really you've been inspirational to me. I've seen like you'll do, I remember you doing a sidekick where your foot was like really high in the air. I'm just like, how is that possible? And yeah. I couldn't even come close to doing it. And then I actually started doing it and like now I can do it. Um, yeah. but it really like seeing where you've gone and how you've evolved has helped me evolve personally. So I want to thank you for that. Um, oh, but, that. but I, 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 yeah, I was going to say, I think it's, it's a situation a lot of guys go through 
it, it's almost like this like our aesthetic paradigm to more of like a I just want to be functionally strong and fit. And the, I still think the aesthetics there. It's just that like yep. the form follows the function, so to speak. Right. And it's more of a natural kind of look. That's exactly. how I see it. Um, in, the, in, the, in the beginning, it was a goal for me. The aesthetics were the goal. Right. Um, and aesthetics was just the side effect. Right. To me, I think it should be a reflection. Uh, the body should be an authentic thing. Like when I look at someone's body, to me, it tells me what they're like, what they are interested in, how they use their bodies. And it should be authentic. And so for a, for a period of, of my life, I kind of manipulated my body to look a certain way, but it wasn't necessary because I thought that that image will make me athletic. Interesting. Make me feel a different way. But you get there and you realize, but that's not really what I wanted. I guess it's kind of like people wanting the money, but realizing when they get the money that it's not the actual goal. What, you know, maybe building a business or going through that journey or, or giving something back contributing in, in some sort of way, maybe that's kind of what they want, or maybe they want to belong or give back or whatever it might be, but money itself doesn't give you the, the happiness kind of. And so to me, like physique itself, it doesn't matter if you just get the physique right now and it's perfect. Um, it, in the end, it, it's like, it doesn't really give you any satisfaction. But that journey that I went through of all the things that I learned building the physique was awesome. That's profound, man. Thanks for sharing that. And let's, let's go into your exercise. Let's talk a little bit about your exercise. So I know it's evolved a lot over the years. I know we've, we've done a lot of workouts together and I actually did my first Turkish get up with you, which is pretty cool, which for me is a big deal. Cause I've done like thousands of them probably. Um, so what does your exercise routine look like now? Uh, it kind of varies. Um, at the moment, I do full body workouts, and I do it at least three times a week, where I do full 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 body strength training. I have some kettlebells here in the back. I don't know if you see. Kind of limited. Eight kilogram. That's mostly for my girlfriend. <laughs> Eight kilogram and the twenty four kilogram. Okay. Um, and so so I use the kettlebells. And I do a lot of body weight training. Um, I still, for legs, prefer heavy weight. So uh, when gyms are open right now, we're in a lockdown. When gyms are open, I'll, I'll go do some deadlifts or, or some heavy lunges or, um, or squats. But for everything else, I also have rings hanging here behind behind the computer. And so I can use just body weight, gymnastics, uh, martial arts, dance-inspired sort of training, strength training. Nice. So can you give an example of what one of your strength workouts looks like? Uh, yeah, sure. Mm. So you, uh, I start the, the beginning of the workout is, is a warm up and I don't really think of it as, as a warm up, but I actually, I think of it as probably the most important part of my training because, um, I realize that also my clients, uh, that, that, that's where they get the most resilience and mobility and coordination and a lot of um, magical things that help them, uh, help their joints and help, help their stability. Um, and usually it's kind of long, it's probably up to 30 minutes. Um, I will go through uh, kind of joint by joint um, start with more gentle, gentle things like, you know, circular, circular motions uh, through every joint. And then um, I'll start kind of strengthening them in different ways. Um, and then depending on what my workout will include, there might be like, if I'm doing handstands, for example, I might warm up my wrist a little bit more, uh, do push-ups on the back of the wrist or something to, to kind of condition them or strengthen them. If I'm doing something... Um, a heavy knee, some sort of like single leg crossover pistol or something like that. I might do like sissy squats or something to warm up the knees. I don't know if these names actually mean anything. It's, it keep on going. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll t I, I know what they are, but we'll, we'll, we can update everyone if they don't know what that means. 
Yeah, sure. And uh, and then I'll get into the the training, and and usually uh, I'll probably divide it into a couple of circuits. The first part will be a little bit more skill based. So, uh, for example, it might include some sort of hand balancing, so maybe a handstand, and um, and then. I would combine it with some sort of hanging drill, so maybe skin the cat, for example, or maybe front levers or back levers. So, so it's kind of a nice push-pull straight arm um, variations that kind of balance each other out. And then I would probably do either uh, something explosive for my legs, so some some sort of jumping movement, or um, or a skillful balance-based uh, movement. So. Uh, it could be put for posterior chain, so maybe like right. some sort of like squat and, and balancing and reaching, or it could be some sort of pistol. Like uh, today, I was I was doing uh, can can you see me? Yep. I was, I was doing these pistols crossing towards the front, crossing towards the back. That was one of my leg exercises in my first uh, first circuit with handstands and uh, skin the cat. And then for the second circuit, um, I was doing some sort of squat. I was doing a uh, like a sliding push up into a hip bike, so it's like a core and a right, pushing, yeah. and a single leg deadlift to bent over row. Right. So. Okay. So just to kind of recap, you'll do a really long kind of warm up to really prime your body and get it mobile and kind of get it resilient. Um, and then you'll go into, uh, possibly a couple circuits, right? Maybe two, three exercises each. And for people who might not, you know, understand like what's a sissy squat, what's a pistol squat, like these are, or what's skin the cat. These are kind of more advanced, right? Gymnast, almost gymnastic style types of exercises that maybe, I don't know, five, 10 people out of a hundred can do, right? It's just, it's just not something that's. That's a you know you see someone just being able to do it, right, but they're a little bit more advanced, is what I'm getting at, right? Yeah, sure. Obviously, yeah. you're advanced. That's why you're doing them. So they're almost a little bit more like gymnastic uh, level or style. But the yeah. the concept is basically, you know, you got that long warm up. You got the kind of body weight circuits. It sounds like maybe a little bit of strength in there, and then mm-hmm. and then that's it. So it sounds like the actual circuits themselves, they're not too much longer than the warm up. No, yeah, it's probably around 30 minutes. Right, right. Uh, probably 15 to 20 minutes per circuit. Okay, okay. And, uh, and in the warm-up, I also put something creative. So um, I'll start maybe with a song, and I just move. I, and I just kind of feel whatever my body needs. So some sort of something with improvisation, something that makes me um, really listen to my body. Um, yeah, and then uh, and then the circuits. I'll divide. Uh, you know, like I have different phases that I go through, and sometimes I might only do like a gymnastic straight arm push pull kind of moves, and then the next day uh, do maybe um, bent arm push and pull, uh, and then and then legs uh, the third day. So sometimes I'll go through a routine like this. Uh, lately, I've just been sticking to full body. And I just feel like if this is the only workout I'll do this week, it's complete. That's that's what it feels like to me. Cool. Um, cool. And and what uh, are you gonna say something else or? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's lots of little details, but I, but no, I think. Well, that... Okay. okay. Um, like, what what else? Is there another detail that you wanted to share? Um. Yeah. Sometimes. Um, I don't know. I don't know how you felt during this uh, pandemic in the beginning. I didn't have much motivation, and so so sometimes um, I'll do like 20-minute workouts. So if I if I will set up maybe four or five exercises, and I'll just do um, 40 40 seconds at each exercise, and I will run through that four times. And uh, if I have four exercises, that's 16 minutes. If I have five exercises, that's 20 minutes. And uh, and I just say, you know what? Like that's all I have for today. And if I do this, and if I feel like doing more, then I'll do more. Then maybe I'll do another another set or another round. 
But that's what actually got me through in the beginning when I was kind of going through a little slump um, in the, during the, the pandemic. Interesting. I actually, I want to come back to that in, in, in a moment. And the, I guess, how many times are you doing these types of workouts? How many days a week? I generally do something physical every day. Okay. So uh, I'm very intuitive at this point. So it's not as structured anymore as it used to be. Like when I was bodybuilding or powerlifting or something, then then I definitely was very, very regimented. Uh, now, um, if I definitely every day I'm going to do something. Um, and I start every morning with um, like putting a listening to a song and just moving and feeling what my body needs. And then kind of based on that, if I feel I'm super energetic, I'll do I'll do a really heavy workout and sometimes I could do three days in a row and then sometimes I'm like, okay, I need a day or two and do something more gentle. Um, yeah. That's cool. I think uh, intuitive, th that's kind of where I am right now. Uh, I've always had like a goal, like some type of like certification or something and that would, you know, I'd be structured for like months, whereas sure. now it's a little bit more intuitive. At, this, at the, the other kind of, on the flip side, I think it can sometimes be really challenging for people who are not like professionals at this to be intuitive because it's like you don't know what your body needs, so to speak. It's, it's a tricky it's a tricky thing. Um, OK, cool. So we're going to dive into a little bit more about that. But, you know, what are your top three strength exercises? Let's talk, you know, body weight and then weights. Like what are your top three for each? If you can only choose three. Hmm. Three for the entire body, right? Well, uh, well, that's a good question. Well, how about this? If you wanted, if you had to push it to five, you can push it to five. But basically, three. <laughs> you know, three. What are your three top three body weight exercises? Top three um, weight exercises, kind of strength focused. Yeah. So for for body weight, I would say a pull up. Okay. Super super important, and. Uh, and it, you can keep progressing to single arm pull up. So, so I think the the amount of strength that you can gain from that is massive. Um, then I would go to to some sort of pushing exercise. So then I would go either to a handstand push up or a single arm push up. And then for the legs, I'd say a pistol is a really really nice one. Um, yeah. So like the, those three, I, I feel like if you just do those three, you, you'll, be, you'll be fit. In order to do a pistol, you have to have such nice uh, ankle mobility and, and really, you know, healthy knees and, and, and everything has to work in a, in a nice way and you have to be mobile and strong. So, so if you can do pistols and you can do them full range of motion and you can start adding weight to them, um, I think you're pretty good. <laughs> and by the way, that's and, both sides too. So you're nice and balanced. Exactly. You right. definitely get balanced. And the single arm pull up and the handstand push up or a single arm push up. I think you're pretty good. Nice, man. Okay. That, those are amazing exercises. I, I don't think I'd be, I, I would choose anything too much different. And what about... Uh, with weights, like a strength training with weights, like what what are the three exercises you would choose? Deadlifts for sure. And conventional or sumo, with a barbell or Conven with a oh, conventional? Okay. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I would do conventional or RDLs, but but yeah, probably conventional. Okay. Just uh, really nice posterior chain work. Yeah. And um, and then I would choose either a lunge or a squat, probably probably a lunge or like a back foot elevated split squat. Um, I really, really love back lunges with a heavy weight. Um, and uh, um, squats are also great. Uh, I, I think squats kind of depend, like not, not everyone's physiology. Um, it does as well with squats. Like I feel that back lunges are super safe. Like I, I haven't met anyone who, who cannot do uh, back lunges pretty safely. And then I feel like you get such a great, 
great workout and super safe. But with squats, sometimes people develop back issues or maybe if their hips are a little out of alignment they, um, or if they don't have enough mobility in their the lower back, it's getting beat up. So, so squats are questionable. For some people, they're perfect. For some people, they're not. Um, and then for um, maybe overhead... Um, like the overhead press, like a push press or something like that, just because, um, again, you have to have really nice shoulder mobility to, to be able to do it correctly and stack everything and, and have really great core control. Um, yeah. Nice, man. It only, it only took me five years to work up to that after stretching. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like getting, especially both, getting both arms vertical and pressing with both arms, it's... Mm -hmm. It's funny because you, you see people do it and it's like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Like when you really understand the mechanics of it, it's sure. not easy, as you know. And it sounds like, I mean, that, that it forces you to have that. And what's cool is you have that mobility, you have that strength. And they're kind of mm -hmm. go together. And that's something that's kind of cool. Right? Yeah. Um, okay. okay, those are those are really great exercises, man. Um, I'm just thinking about them. They're, they're really great. And so can you, are you still doing like, so you said you do something active every day. So you're doing strength maybe a few times a week, I assume, like that kind of circuit stuff. Yeah. And, and I'd then, say, yeah, I'd say at least three times a week, maybe up to five times a week, I'll do okay. some training. And you know, I, I uh, teach lots of people online. Right. So uh, I'm, like I said, I'm into it, intuitive with my own workouts. But, uh, but sometimes I'll teach someone and I have clients that are so badass and so strong and I'll take them through <laughs> and I'll just be like, whoa, this is amazing. I can't wait to do it myself. And so I often will kind of experiment on them just to see how they do and then yeah. I'll do it myself. And maybe I'll, I'll like, you know, make it a little more complex, uh, but, but yeah. Uh, so I often get inspired by what I teach others. Nice, man. And so, you know, you do these like three or five and like, what are you doing on the other days when you're not doing like a strength kind of training um, workout? Yeah. So often when I teach my classes, I teach classes uh, four times a week. So I'll jump in with them and kind of move with them. And especially we'll do warm ups with them. And like I said, those warm ups are kind of can be quite intense. <clears throat> I think sometimes people, when they start with me, they realize that the warm up is really difficult, but but so I'll I'll do at least that kind of kind okay. of move, and um, I'll uh, I'll go outside. I'll, um, like sometimes I'll run or do some sprints or um, again kind of put on the music and just improvise. And so when I go um, right now, it's 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 wet and and not so so fun to do it outside, but. During, during the summer especially, I'll go um, outdoors and there's a, a park nearby uh, and it's like uh, an elephant park and it's um, but for, for kids, they're kind of just playing around there and I usually find a corner and I just put on some music and they start moving around and improvising and then um, kids come, come around and start playing with me or dogs love playing with me. So, and they always ask me what I'm doing. So, uh, so it's like a mix of acrobatics, stretching, uh, dancing, uh, sort of thing, and uh, and I, I always tell myself I'm going to do at least one song, and sometimes I end up doing an hour and a half. <laughs> right. So it really, you know, it really depends kind of how my body feels, but but it can be kind of strenuous because uh, I, I definitely feel like I get to a flow. So and um, when when you get into this like state of flow, it's it's like you're really challenging yourself. So there has to be a skill level that, that you, you're pushing yourself, but because it's so much fun, because I'm passionate about it, because I'm enjoying it, I don't really feel the pain sometimes. And so I'm just like, you know, moving my body in, in all these crazy ways. And, and there's lots of pressure on the knees and, and pressure, you know, I'm contorting and hand balancing and doing all these weird things. And, and so sometimes I get really sore from it. Then afterwards, I walk away and I'm like, oh, wow, I, I really put in some work. <laughs> nice. And are you doing any kind of conditioning stuff? Because I remember you used to be, you know, you used to do sprints and that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, once in a while, I'll do, I'll, I still believe that sprints are awesome. Right. It's, it's one of the best. Um, 
So, yeah, I haven't been as focused on them lately, but I think when the weather warms up, I'll, I'll go back to it. Cool. And so, you know, you've... And so for people listening, I mean, Narius is like super flexible. Like you'll see, like he's really, he could literally just about do a split or basically, I don't know, can you, you can do a split, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you can do, you know, we're talking like side and front splits are close enough and it's like major flexibility. Yeah. <laughs> ma- ma- really, but really close. And so I guess. And, and again, he's, he's literally trained acrobats, right? So, and he does acrobatic kind of style workouts himself. So the question for you, Narius, is like, how, how do you recommend the average guy kind of get more flexible? Like, where does he start? Mm. Like, he's not going to do a split, right? <laughs> yeah. So what do, you, what do you recommend? I generally like to incorporate into that, that into the strength training. So most of the time, most of the exercises that I do are taking taking people through full range of motion. So if I'm doing pull-ups, they're fully right. um, distracting, going to a full passive passive hang, and they're fully opening their shoulders. So not like slide bend in the elbow, but like fully going through a f- completely full relaxation and full chest to the bar. So so that if you're doing this all the time will lengthen and open your shoulders and if when i'm doing push-ups i'll do deficit push-ups so i'll maybe use yoga blocks or something and so that i go past the regular range so that's opening and working opening through my chest Mm, when i'm doing lunges i'll often do lunges that are really long so instead of stepping back into a regular lunge like this I might do a lunge that is extra extra long, and so that's working on opening opening my hip. When I'm doing RDLs or bending, I'm making sure that I'm really really challenging my my hamstrings. And so in a way, I think mobility is just built into my strength training. There's no exercise that I do. I really don't think so. Not many exercises that I do that don't take me through full range of motion and don't challenge my range of motion. Right. So that's, that's one thing. And then, and then um, I'll still do some mobility work, usually strength-based. Um, so an example like Jefferson curls, do you know what those are? I know what they are, but I don't know what the people listening know. So how so would you describe like- them? It's like a deadlift done in a really bad form with a rounded back. Which is, yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's, I've done them a couple of times and I was like, this is strong medicine. It's, it, anyways, yeah, you can continue. So you, you don't necessarily have to use heavy weight. Right, right. It's very light. You use very light weight as you do it. But the point is you, you go into the, the end of range, range of motion. So right. I'm right. using, let's say, uh, some sort of step. And at the edge, and I'm, I'm using a weight, and then I come down as far as, as I can, and I'm usually holding a weight. And so the weight would pull me even further than I can go naturally. And then from there, I would roll up. Right. And so so it's um, active, active, uh, actively pulling me into a deeper range of motion. And then it also strengthens strengthens me on the way up and on the way down and it also does that to the spine too so it's it's mobilizing my spine right so so i do kind of exercises like this and i, and I mentioned skin the cat because that that's an amazing uh extend shoulder extension exercise a uh, mobility exercise but it's also a nice strength strength exercise right. so and and then no matter how much i think you can force yourself into certain mobility, but if you if you don't practice these movements in your daily life or in your some sort of, of practice, then I think you lose them. So so for me, you know, when I say I'm playing in the park and I'm, I'm moving in all these different ranges of motion, I'm maintaining my my range. So those are the two things that I would do. Is first, I would add really full range of motion to my strength program. I would add some specific exercises that increase mobility, and usually they're strength-based. 
So they're, they're, um, take you th to an extra range of motion with assistance. So a, a very good example, most people know what pullovers are. Right, of course. Great, great opener, Arnold. Right. <laughs> and Arnold had a, had a nice shoulder mobility, but it's a great way to open your shoulders through the rib cage, open through your uh, thoracic spine, and also great strengthening exercises. Uh, RDLs or Jefferson curls, really great hamstring exercise right. as well as as an awesome mobility exercise. Um, so there, there's lots of different exercises, pretty much in whatever category you want to choose, that work both mobility and strength. That's so right. I would the strength program, do some of those exercises, and then make sure that you're moving in full range of motion. Right, and it's like a daily practice. And one thing I've I've attempted to you know, promote or I have promoted is essentially this kind of morning mobility or just kind of having some type of mobility routine and doing it like daily as in not, not like a few days a week. Cause it's just, that just doesn't get the job done. I don't think, what are your, what are your thoughts? Totally. But, but the, the key is that it has to be fun. Yes. <laughs> and right. most people when they're like, Oh shit, I have to stretch and blood and it's just not much fun. But if you somehow figure out a way to do it, that it's fun, then you're gonna love doing it. So, so for me, that's why uh, just improvising to a song cool. is a lot more fun, and and then connecting to the body and feeling where it needs to open. Cool. So, I mean, you've clearly reached like super high levels of fitness in terms of just, again aesthetics, in terms of function. Like, I'm kind of curious, what is your, what does your diet look like now? Hmm. Also intuitive. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, generally, I'm more of a protein type. Um, do, you, do you know much metabolic typing kind of? It, there's. I mean, I've 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 read about it, but please, it, please, I'll, yeah, please, I'll, please tell, I'll, please tell, tell me about it. So there is an idea that um, that based on our ancestry, there's three basic metabolic types. If you grew up in cold country. Uh, like Northern Europe or um, Lithuania is pretty cold, I imagine. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> uh, or I don't know, Antarctica or right. whatever. Uh, you're probably eating a lot more fat and a lot more protein. Right. Like if you just ate some some fruit and carbohydrates, and uh, you you just they just run through your system very quickly. You need more substance and you need um, more density. Okay. So it's a protein type. Then people that grew up in very warm countries, uh, lots of fruit, maybe rice available. They're they're well adapted to eating carbohydrates, and they digest them a little slower, and it's a perfect fuel for them. Then there are people around mild climates, maybe Mediterranean climate, where they've adapted to kind of almost everything. They can digest breads really well. They they like lighter protein, maybe some fish or maybe some chicken, some things, some things like that. Um, and so, generally, most people fall into right. one of the categories. Uh, I'm definitely more of a protein type. I was telling you that, that I went to India and I was eating vegan for like a few months and I lost 20 pounds like that until I started pouring ghee and butter on every everything and then my weight loss stopped, stopped down. So, so for me, um, I, I just know that I do better on, on the higher protein, higher fat. Um, and so... That's kind of, and I love potatoes for carbs. <laughs> I'm like a meat and potatoes kind of guy. Generally, that's how I was raised in Lithuania, and that's what works really well. I eat lots of fruits and vegetables. Um, the most important thing for me is the source right. of the food, and then and then trying to put it in the balance that works for me. So generally, a little bit heavier fat or protein, uh, and then lower lower in carbohydrates. I don't really crave. Um, besides potatoes, I don't really crave uh, lots of carbs as much. Like fruit is, is probably fruit, and potatoes uh, and vegetables are my main carb sources. Um, yeah, I don't eat red meat as much anymore, uh, maybe like once a month. Um, I love fish and, and some um, darker meat chicken, kind of. Uh, lots of eggs. <laughs> I, I think I've eaten eggs since I was a kid every day. 
uh, and I used to eat as many as 10 eggs a day. Now, now I eat like four or five. So I've, <laughs> I've gotten milder. Um, and, uh, and I don't eat as many meals anymore. That's also a slowdown. Um, and I pay attention to how many hours I eat during the day. So generally, I try to eat somewhere between 9 and 12 hours at the most. 12 hours is the cutoff for me. Um, so if I start, um, this morning I start at 10 a.m. So by 10 p.m., uh, I'm already done, it's 9, 9 p.m. here. But I was done eating by, by like 7.30 um, p.m. So um, yeah, so I try, like, if I, if I want to get lean, uh, I give myself 9 hours a day to eat. If, um, but if I'm just maintaining whatever, up to 12 hours. So it's more of like a time restricted yeah. approach. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Can, can you give an example of like a, a day, a typical day? Uh, yeah, sure. Mm, let's see. Um, today I started with, uh, with a, a tea and, uh, at like maybe 9 a.m. At 10, I had uh, I had a um, butter coffee. So it was like butter coffee, MCT oil, um, some collagen protein, and yeah, uh, blended together. That was my first meal. Then I had a um, four eggs boiled with tomatoes pickle pickles and and a little bit of cheese and a in a salad with uh yeah like lots of tomatoes and some some other greens in there too um and then i had some fruit and cashew butter snack and a little bit of cottage cheese and then for dinner i had salmon with vegetables and a Lithuanian salad. <laughs> Lithuanian salad is like a potato salad. And sometimes I'll just, I'll just make, it's like with lots of vegetables. So there's like peas and carrots and sweet potatoes and, and some, some other things and some eggs and potato. Yeah. And so uh, it's, it's just a nice little side dish. Nice. So, yeah. So that's kind of what it, my day today was like. I mean, it all, it sounds like it's all unprocessed foods right like i mean it sounds like from as i know i mean you've been like that for a long long time i mean you've been pretty uh, pretty committed to eating unprocessed foods if i'm not mistaken because i think it just makes you bloated right like what what like why do you not or, or like why do you not eat processed foods or what are your thoughts around that kind of the candy the cakes the cookies all that kind of stuff i don't i don't really think of it as as like real food in in a way and uh, they just don't make me feel good. So um, my energy drops, my my moods shift. I um, I think when, if I if if my mood starts feeling very, like if I don't feel grounded, that's usually very much related to food for me. And so I just know that I need like a really nice nice meal to to kind of keep my energy energy calm. And uh, um, and if I'm feeling like overly stressed, almost anxious, for me, it's, it's often related to food. If I'm eating sugary foods, then my energy will just be really low or um, just very uneven. So, so first of all, it doesn't feel good. Second of all, from, from everything that I've, I've known and researched, it's, uh, I just know that it's not good for you. <laughs> So between knowing that it's not good for me and then anytime I eat it makes me feel terrible and makes me feel hungry very quickly soon after or just makes me constantly keep keep craving for more. Um, that, that's why I just I just feel really good on, on like nat natural foods. Cool. Cool. Um, well, we're, we're getting up on time here. I mean, is there anything else um, we haven't really discussed or touched upon that you, you'd like to mention? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I mentioned that um, we should have more fun with with training. I think that's one of the one of the ways to to get people to stick to it is to make sure that that they enjoying it. And one of the things that I really 
love to work um, with people with is to to help them change their mindset on why they're choosing to work towards a certain goal. And to me, it's really important that they come from a, a very powerful position. That first, they appreciate what they have, and just realize um, what an incredible instrument you have. And it doesn't matter if you're a little overweight. It doesn't matter if you, you know, you're not perfect to the standards that that we see on social media or or magazines. Uh, but just realize like how incredible it is that your body is functioning, that you're alive. Because if you if you want to go through this exercise and think about what hasn't happened to you, like you know you might not have cancer, you might not have broken bones, or or you know some horrible disease, wasting disease, or or whatever. So so if you are generally normal, if you're like a little overweight, or you have some aches or or some weaknesses, that's not the problem. Like just appreciate what you already have, and then from there, when you try to get stronger, when you try to become more mobile, it's more of an exploration. It's more exciting that you can you can um, the potential that you can get to. Um, so so I think that's that's the message that I want to to tell people. First, appreciate what you have, and then uh, have some fun and explore and be playful. And just see see what you you can get to. Awesome, man! I, I really appreciate. It. I think that's a, an amazing message, and I really appreciate you sharing. And uh, I'm sure that you know our listeners are going to really appreciate it as well. And so, um, how can people follow you or learn more about you, Marius? Yeah, so um, you can find me on Instagram, um, Narius Train P3. Um, and uh, and there is uh, I, I haven't actually done that much online because mostly I just work privately with people. Uh, but I have a page that kind of describes all my services and my classes, and and I'll send it to you, and you can just add that to your uh, to your letter. Cool to so the podcast notes, so to speak. I get, I'll, I'll I was gonna say I'll I'll have you know the 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 podcast and all the you know the the transcript and some of the links. Um, you know, uh, on the on the uh, podcast article. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, yeah, and I, I teach classes throughout the week, um, and I, I do some some personal private coaching for lifestyle and uh, and movement. Cool. Uh, yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. Uh, no, Narius, again, it was so it was it was so great, kind of catching up and uh, you know connecting with you, and and I really. Uh, you know, appreciate you sharing your your wisdom, and uh, you know, clearly you've you've had a really awesome journey, and you've gotten to a really high level of fitness and health, and it's it's really cool to see, and and I'm just grateful, you know, to be able to chat with you about it. So, um, so with all that uh-huh. said, man, again, I really really appreciate it, and uh, enjoy the rest of the night. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Mark, and I really appreciate what you do. Also, I think that you're helping so many uh, so many guys get. Uh, get more fit, and uh, and so I appreciate that we connected, and thanks for having me. Look right. forward to talking soon. All right, all right, bye bye. Take care.